I'm excited to welcome you to the absolute best video on the assignment operator you'll find anywhere on YouTube. In this video, I cover everything you need to know in detail and use interactive animations, beautiful illustrations, and professional editing to ensure you remain engaged in order to maximize your learning. So let's jump in. So what is the assignment operator? The assignment operator assigns values to variables. And it's what we have already been doing throughout the videos. We declare a variable like this, let first name equal the string Daniel. And in order to assign the string Daniel to this variable, we have to use the assignment operator, which is just an equal sign. Now, something I just want to highlight with the equal sign is that it is not like in maths. The equal sign in JavaScript doesn't work like in traditional maths. So in normal maths, we would have something like four plus three equals seven. If you were to type something like this in the console, this is actually invalid in JavaScript. In order to execute four plus three, we just hit enter. So the equal sign in JavaScript is about assignment. It's not about equality. We'll be seeing in a later video how we can perform operations of equality. That is, seeing if two things are the same. Now the assignment operator is also commonly used to create new variables from existing ones. So for example, if we had the variable width equals 10, height equals 20, we could declare a new variable, let area equal width times height. So we have a new variable, area, we have our assignment operator, and the value assigned to area is made up of existing variables, that is 10 times 20. So the variable area will be storing the value 200. Now the next concept we need to discuss is compound assignment operators. This is where we combine an arithmetic operation with assignment in one step. So to understand this, I first wanna recap the increment operator, which we've seen in a previous video. The increment operator can only increment a variable by one. So for example, we have let x equals five, and to increment this by one, we use the increment operator denoted by x plus plus. Now this is actually a shorthand. What's actually happening behind the scenes is this. We have x equals x plus one. And these are equivalent, they're achieving the same thing, that is incrementing the value of five by one. So the big thing with the increment operator is that it can only increment by one at a time. So let's now take a look at compound assignment. This is when we can increment by any number. So again, let's look at x equals five. So now if we wanted to increment this by say the number three, we wouldn't be able to use the increment operator because that increments it by one. But we do know there's a longhand way of achieving this. We could write x equals x plus three. That would effectively increment x by three, giving it the value eight. But just like there's a shorthand when incrementing by one with the increment operator, there's also a shorthand for this using compound assignment. And it looks like this, x plus equals three. This is called addition assignment. It's just a shorthand for incrementing the initial value stored in x by any number we like, in this case, three. So these are equivalent. So just to summarize, the increment operator increments a value by one, and the shorthand is x plus plus, and the addition assignment operator increments a value by any number we want. So let's now take a look at all the different compound assignment operators inside this table. I'll be going through the name of each, the operator symbol, an example, the results of the example, and its usage. Starting with the addition assignment operator, which we just looked at, we saw that the notation is plus equals. Looking at an example, let x equals six, x plus equals two, would now mean that the value of x is eight. And for its usage, it is commonly used. Subtraction assignment, is minus equals, looking at example, let x equals five. If we then did x minus equal three, the value of x would be two. And again, this is commonly used. For multiplication assignment, we have the multiplication symbol asterisk and then equals. Looking at example, let x equal eight, x multiply equals three would give us a value of 24. That is eight times three. Now this is less commonly used. For division assignment, we have divide equals or forward slash equals. Looking at an example, we have a let x equals 10, x divide equals five, would change the value of x to two. That is 10 divide five. And again, this is less commonly used. We then have modulus assignment, which is percentage equals. Looking at an example, let x equal eight. So x modulus equals three, would change the value of x to two. That is eight divide three, goes in twice, remainder two. And as a reminder, the modulus is always the remainder. In terms of its usage, it's rarely used. The final one is the exponential assignment, where we have asterisk, asterisk equals. 
Looking at the example, we have let x equals 2. We then perform exponential assignment with the value 3 to change the value of x to 8. That is 2 to the power of 3, which is 2 times 2 times 2, which is 8. And similarly, this is rarely used. Now you may be feeling a bit overwhelmed with all these different kinds of assignments. It's only common to use the first two. And at the end of the day, even if you didn't know about compound assignment, you can still achieve this the longhand way. For example, when we have let x equals 6 and x plus equals 2, you can just achieve the exact same thing with x equals x plus 2. Now compound assignment is a much more concise and clean way of doing this, but you still can achieve this the long way. Long story short, I don't want you stressing over this too much. Let's go play around with this inside VS Code. All right, so I've gone ahead and set up an index.html file, grabbed the HTML boilerplate, and linked a JavaScript file, app.js, which is currently empty. Okay, so for this example, I'm gonna be using addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division assignment when checking out on an e-commerce application, something like buying clothes online. So I'm gonna initialize a variable called total price, which I'm initially gonna to set to zero. Now I'm gonna be adding a whole bunch of different compound assignment, and I wanna see how the value changes at each step. So I'm straight away gonna go grab console.log and output the total price in the console. So let's go open the console and see this. All right, as expected, you can see the total price is currently zero. I'm gonna add a comment, and let's first go do some addition assignment. For this, on our e-commerce application, this is simply going to be adding different items to our cart. Let's say the first item costs $15, Instead of writing total price equals total price plus 15, we can use addition assignment to simplify this by writing total price plus equals 15. I'll refresh the console and you can see the total price is now 15. Let's say the user adds another item for $25. I'll refresh and you can see the total price is now 40. That is 25 added to 15. And let's say the user adds one more item, which costs $30. I'll refresh and you can now see the value of total price is 70. Okay, let's now go do an example of subtraction assignment. For this, on the e-commerce application, let's say the user had a coupon for $10. So we need to subtract $10 from the total price. So we would do total price minus equals 10. I'll refresh and you can see the value of total price is now 60. Now, as I mentioned, addition assignment and subtraction assignment are by far the most common types of compound assignment you'll be performing in JavaScript. But let me just go do multiplication and division so you can see those in action as well. For multiplication assignments, let's say we now need to add a 20% tax onto the total price. So we will do total price multiplied equals 1.2. So this is multiplying the total price by 1.2, which adds 20% onto the total price. If I refresh, you'll now see the total price is 72. Okay, the final one, let's go do division assignment. To simulate this, let's say that this is a checkout using one of those buy now, pay later schemes, where you can split the total price into three equal payments over time. So for now, we just wanna work out the price the user needs to pay today. So we would do total price divide equals three. This now divides the total price of 73 by three. I'll refresh and you can now see the total price is 24. So let's take a look at assignment operators in action. It's gonna be similar to the example we just went through, but now looking at our EasyJet web application. Initially, the basket is zero pounds, so we would have a variable let total price equals zero. As a user, I'll add my outbound flight over here, so the basket updates to 80.99. This would be achieved with addition assignment like this, total price plus equals 80.99. I would then add on my inbound flight of 103.59, and my basket updates. So in JavaScript, it would look like this, total price plus equals 103.59. And as you can imagine, I would move through this application, continuing to add more, like adding a meal or extra baggage. So the assignment operator is really helpful for when we need to increase or decrease a particular value throughout an application. So let's wrap up the theory of this video by building a summary card, compound assignment operators. Initially looked at addition assignment using the plus equals symbol, where we can have, for example, let price equal 100 and simply add to this price like this, price plus equals 20. This changes the price value to 120. And it's a more concise way of writing price equals price plus 20. We then looked at subtraction assignment, where for example, we have let weight equal 90 and using subtraction assignment, we can do weight minus equals 10, which would change the value of weight to 80. Now these were the most common types of compound assignment 
but we also looked at multiplication, division, modulus, and exponential assignment. If you've enjoyed this style of teaching and are looking at mastering JavaScript, you can join me in my JavaScript full course, which is available for free on my channel. The course is designed for complete beginners and covers everything you need to know to code JavaScript at a professional level. In the course, you'll experience the same high quality teaching and build a whole range of real life projects from scratch. Join me today and also make sure to subscribe to the channel to stay in the loop with new releases. See you in the JavaScript full course.